This is a very interesting case that I hope will help many people in the world. This is gonna be a 24 year old man with severe palpitations only when he is on steroids. The chief complaint for this man and why he comes to me is that he has severe palpitations on anabolic steroids and it's very uncomfortable. He's had a history of this and he's very concerned. The history of present illness is that about three years ago, he starts off into this training world and the steroid world with SARMs. He does five to six cycles. And then after time, he says, he enters into gear, he says, 500 milligrams of test a week plus Anovar. He does that for unspecified time, maybe a few months, and it seems like it goes quite well. And then he stops. And then he goes back on another cycle and a similar cycle, and he has severe, uh, what he calls palpitations and end up being diagnosed with PVCs, but it's very limited diagnosis. He saw cardiology, <clears throat> goes into a withdrawal period, coming off of steroids, they told him to stop, goes back on some testosterone and unfortunately very high doses, maybe some SARMs um, <clears throat> like he did before and he has the palpitations again ends up seeing a doctor. Now we're kind of coming up into this current time period and sees what appears to be a cardiologist. And um, they say that he has uh, a need for a procedure, a patch procedure. And it's just interesting that this man didn't tell him about the steroids. And the doc, I think, ran through quite quick and didn't take his history that we'll go into in a minute here and just says, you need to go in the hospital. We need to go in and the patient, he was pointing to his groin, which is a catheter. It's a way to access into the heart. It can be done through the groin. It can be done through the radial approach up here, uh, commonly this day and age. And the man thought he had to go through his penis to go up to his heart. And we were laughing about that because this right now is a, is, a, is a safe scenario for this man, but we, we had a good time talking about it. His past medical history, this is where it gets very interesting, guys. And in my opinion, you have to be a physician to put all this stuff together. He has SVT, he has a flutter as a kid, and it really limited him from participating in recreational sports. And he was uh, really, really looking forward and he was uh, to be an athlete and he could not because of this. It wasn't one of those dangerous rhythms, but it was something that the doctor said, you will not be able to participate, and he never saw an electrophysiologist. Let's keep going. So when he does see this doctor recently, this day and age now, last few months, they diagnose him with a right bundle branch block. You wanna see what that is, right? Mostly that's something that's benign. What else we have with this, this gentleman? So he's off everything now, and he's in a withdrawal period, you know, so he doesn't feel good now. So he's done, some cycles of steroids, not that much, comparatively to guys that are certainly using a lot, the SARMs and all this kind of stuff. And he's he knows he wants to do more. He, he, he And he realizes that he's gonna have to be on testosterone the rest of his life, and he's very young. And he's so scared that he can't because of the palpitations. You see that? That's why this is such an incredible case. And thank you so much, sir, for allowing me to present this case. Of course, I've changed everything around demographically. We're not even going into that stuff. Social history, let's just say he's a executive business guy at this point. He's a desk job guy, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, no drugs, alcohol contributing to this. Family history, he has a mom with MVP, uh, mitral valve prolapse, his dad has hypertension. That's common stuff. The MVP lets you think about something in the end you'll see with, ry with rhythms. So I'm trying to tease you guys a little bit, see how many bro science guys really can be doctors and how many doctors out there are following this right now. So you got the family history, right, of the MVP and the mom. Maybe it's contributory, maybe it's not. We got the past medical history of supraventricular tachycardia. He's got a right bundle. And he's this man that twice when he's on sustained steroids, he runs into really a very bothersome palpitations so much that he stops the steroids, sees a doctor, and the doctor just says he needs a patch procedure. 
What's next? In the analysis and the plan, what do you have? I have his labs. So always have to get vital signs are fine. His resting heart rate's in the 50s. Otherwise, in great shape. No tachycardia at baseline. Blood pressure's 110 over 70. This man is... About 5'10", 185 pounds. He's not a very huge man, not a skinny guy, just a normal guy, well-built guy. <clears throat> Cholesterol is completely perfect. He's on no medicines right now. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the medicines he naturally used and he found by doing some bro science research and he went on some of his own meds. His primary care history is insignificant for any other medical issues. And kidney function is completely normal. Glucose normal. Hemoglobin A1C, normal. Thyroid, normal. So that's something you have to look at. CBC is normal. Urinalysis, completely normal. And by the time he comes to me, he's already on some Novadex. So it's interesting. His testosterone is 600. Uh, the free is about 154. Upper limit, normal. And his FSH and LH, one's up and one's down. Prolactin is normal. Don't need to get into these details. Estradiol, ultra sensitive, is elevated because he's on PCT with just some limited tamoxifen at this time. That's why the labs look like that, but he's not feeling well. He wants to go back on some steroids. He certainly wants to go back on some testosterone and he's concerned for the palpitations. This is a cool case. So the medicines he actually tried, he was given metoprolol. So the docs, again, we're not putting the docs down. They're busy. They look at things. They, they bagged out an ECG. Things were normal. I'm not sure they knew about his, his, his uh, history as a child. Uh, as a teenager, and they said, here's metoprolol. It's a beta blocker. So they gave it to a 24-year-old man. They didn't know about the steroid history. Gave him metoprolol. He walks out metoprolol. Doesn't like it. It works, Keeps, but does he need it? So he goes online and finds out there's a better beta blocker called nabivalol. And in my opinion, for certain circumstances, it can be uh, better tolerated than metoprolol. But this is very... This is bro science stuff, you know, apart from real medicine, you gotta be very careful. So what do we got? What's the analysis and plan? This is a 24 year old man that has severe palpitations when he hits a certain threshold only on steroids that he's prescribing to himself, of course. And what, what do you have? What's the differential diagnosis, guys? What do you do with this guy? So right off the bat, I'm an internal medicine doc. I said, you know, I think you may have an underlying genetic congenital arrhythmia. I don't think it's so dangerous. Didn't send the guy to the ER. Sometimes I have to send guys to the ER. It gets kind of squirrely. I said, you're fine. You need to see not just a cardiologist. You need to see a doctor called an electrophysiologist. It's a special type of subspecialist cardiologist, guys. That's who he needs. Now, what do you got going on? He's got this right bundle. Is it a natural white bundle? Is it insignificant or is it significant? He's got a past medical history of SVT as a kid. Boom, you got the mom with, with the MVP. Maybe all this stuff comes in and plays a role. Does this man have an atrial ventricular nodal re-entry tachycardia? Right guys, this is complicated stuff. This actually is cakewalk. This is just child's play for any good cardiologist, which I am not a cardiologist. I'm a jack of all, I'm an internist. So is this an accessory pathway, a re-entrant circuit that's quite common and you see it, it's the most common type of SVT rhythm with a young adult. And you could see the predilection is more for women than men, but men can certainly have this. Now, what's the diagnosis? He's gotta go see the right doc. I think the doc actually meant to say that he needed an ablation and he was pointing to the groin and the guy thought he was gonna go up his penis like a urologist would with a cystoscopy, and the guy just said, I'm out of here. He goes to the anabolic doc, right on. So what do you do? Diagnosis, right? Because you guys love all this. This is the analysis and plan. Diagnosis, definitely needs to see the right doctor. That's number one. Not just a cardio, not general cardiology, in my opinion, but electrophysiology. That's a subspecialist of cardiology. It's all about directing traffic nowadays, guys. Got to know where to go. ECG, they can get a halter monitor, but and I think they talked about that with him, that they were gonna have him wear the halter, but he's like, I don't have it, because I'm stopping steroids. So, in my opinion, what's gonna happen? We're gonna follow this case, because I just saw this guy the other day. I did a very nice consult note for him. 
I dictated it. It's very tight like this, actually reading off some of the documents and we gave it to them. That's the consults I do for you guys. It's never going to stop. The app is going to be huge, but I'm never going to stop doing consults because I love it. it. Keeps the brain good too. He needs to see if electrophysiologic mapping procedure can trigger it. This is the trick. I got very excited when I thought about this because as a primary care physician, I've seen this so many times. So he's just, he needs to go the extra step. He needs to see this special electrophysiologist. And in my opinion, I don't tell these guys what to do, but I'll bet you they're going to want to uh, do EP mapping. And if they find something, then yes, they're going to do not a patch. It's called an ablation for the, for me, it's a catheter ablation. And they're going to find where that rhythm, the, the, the epicenter of the abnormal rhythm is, and they're going to take it out. This is a specialist. Now with that, how beautiful is that? If they do it, if it works, he can go on testosterone. And of course, unfortunately, he probably can go back on steroids. I don't want him to do steroids, but if he needs to be on testosterone, he can go on testosterone. And that, in my opinion, will be a beautiful thing. And I've done my job. I really hope you guys like this cool case. There's so much going on with this case. In part, with management, you could do vagal maneuvers which is where you hold your breath and you bear down or cough. And he's actually utilized these on himself. There's cardioversion where they use electricity and they shock the heart. A lot of that's more common with people that have atrial fibrillation. We know that. Then there's meds like the beta blockers, like metoprolol and nabivalol, which he naturally was using on himself. And then of course, the end, you have the catheter ablation. I really hope this case stimulates some interest. Let's get some discussions going. Have you had palpitations? You could have palpitations without being on steroids. Women have palpitations, young people, too much caffeine, not to mention nervousness, not to mention being tired. Do you have one of these conditions? It's all about taking a proper history, understanding how to put the pieces together. You got to see your doc, a great doc. The app is going to help put all these pieces together and you're going to see all the content and you're going to be able to utilize your own healthcare. And that's the now and that's the future of the digital world. You're going to watch all the videos. That's me. This is not me. Maybe this is me. You're going to make your notes. And in the end, this is how you guys are going to stay strong and healthy. Thank you so much, guys.